Christians do not seek repose. Cast your dreams of ease away. Well, I don't have to give an introduction now. Somebody got on Google, I think, and uh, my wife and I have retired to uh, near Boise, Idaho. Those of you familiar with Idaho will know Caldwell, uh, which is near Nampa, which is where the Pacific Press has its headquarters now. We moved there last July. I uh, retired from, officially retired from uh, Seventh-day Adventist work. Not sure where I'm going to stand, but we'll figure that out later. <clears throat> One of the interesting things about Idaho is, uh, no, I'm sorry, if that's you, that's fine. If it's them, that ain't fine at all. That, <laughs> yeah, okay. We have enjoyed we have enjoyed the weather in Idaho. Uh, Idaho, where where we live, is they, they call that the banana belt. We've had a total of uh, maybe two inches of snow this year, and it's gone in um, in 48 hours. Uh, there's snow above us, snow below us, mountains, of course, all around, and we have we have become accustomed to the weather up there. Uh, we we had lived in a number of places where winter was serious. Uh, North Dakota. Uh, anybody here from North Dakota? Anybody? Okay. So you'll you'll understand the word snurt. No, that's when the wind blows so hard it picks up the dirt off of the fields, mixes it with snow, and then you have these drifts that are layers of dirt and the layers of snow, and they call it snurt. Cheyenne River Academy was where I started, also taught in Maplewood Academy, Minnesota. So I understand winter, but it was different this time because it had been 35 years since we had lived in a winter climate. But now we see evidences of spring. My lawn is beginning to get a little green in places there in Caldwell. The uh, daffodils and the tulips are sticking their heads up out of the ground. And spring is something that we've really looked forward to. The spring of the year is when the Christian church around the world begins to think about Easter, the Passion of Christ, the week, the Passion Week. And so tonight, what we're going to do is open our program with a section of selections that deal with the scenes of the Passion Week, that deal with, as it were, the newness of Thank you. Much. Thank you. The newness of, of life in Christ. The newness of the, the whole idea of being reborn and given, given that, that freshness that spring brings. And as we think about the passion, hang on, we'll get this figured out. There we go. As we think about the Passion Week of Jesus, it falls into several categories. There was the triumphal entry. There was, following that, the, the, the upper room. Then there was the Garden of Gethsemane. There was the cross. And then there was the resurrection. And tonight we're going to bring a selection, a song, from each of those scenes. We start with the triumphal entry that was predicted in the Old Testament that Jesus would come into the city riding on a colt. A colt symbolized peace, though, not the violence that, that was expected by, by all of Israel in overtaking the Romans. But Christ came in on a colt, uh, a donkey, emphasizing that he was the Prince of Peace. But nonetheless, the throngs joined in singing Hosanna to the son of David. <clears throat> Hosanna, blessed is he that comes. Hosanna, blessed is he that Hosanna. 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 Blessed 
Blessed is he that comes. He that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, blessed is he that comes. Hosanna, blessed is he that comes. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. In the highest. Hosanna, blessed is he that comes. Hosanna, 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 blessed is he that comes, he that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes, Hosanna, 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 in the highest, Hosanna, 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 in the
Yeah. 
the old men a rest here for just a second uh, before we move into the next part of our service. I'm not the only one working, but I'm, I think I'm working the hardest up here. Uh, <clears throat> The Christian life is, is, is hard and it's easy. It's simple from the standpoint that as we give ourselves to the Lord, as we yield to that Jesus that lived and died, our salvation is, is assured. Our home is guaranteed in heaven. And as we walk that walk day by day, remaining in the faith, we have the assurance that brings us peace. It doesn't necessarily make us giddy and happy, but it brings us peace. And it brings us that inner joy in knowing that as we continue to walk with the Lord, it is all guaranteed. It is guaranteed. The battle was won at the cross. And our newness in life was sealed in the resurrection. And so we can go forward as Christians being joyful, being happy. And I don't know how many here are Seventh-day Adventists. But I'll bet a, a large majority our Seventh-day Adventists, and I just have a theory that there may have been in our lives, mine included, an insecurity about whether or not I was really saved. Was I? Okay, well now, now what do I have to do? Well, what I've come to realize is that it isn't anything that I can do. All of my righteousness is like filthy rags. Only as Christ enters my heart, only as I allow Jesus in my heart, all day, every day, the works that I do through the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in my life, become the works of righteousness and move me toward that goal of sanctification that I will never reach on this side of heaven, but that I will keep working toward. No one will be perfect before going to heaven. There's a few guys that walked with God and God took them to heaven. Enoch, he walked with God and God took him. And so when I say that the Christian life is, is hard and easy or simple and complex, it is only as we continue to abide in Christ 
that the works of the Spirit in this new temple of Jesus has the peace, has the assurance, and the joy. And my point to the Adventists are that perhaps we haven't shown the world as much of the assurance and the joy and the, and the, and the guarantee that we feel as brothers and sisters of Christ. Uh, churches all over America are having problems and they're struggling and not just SDA but many, many mainstream denominations are losing members. And a lot of it has to do with, I think, the misunderstanding about what we are supposed to, we think we're supposed to do to work our way into the kingdom when really it's as we give ourselves to the Lord day by day that the works of the Spirit in us are what guarantees our salvation, but what also then shows the love of Christ to those that we meet. So I encourage us as Christians, or as want to be Christians, or as not even Christian, to look upon Jesus, to find that joy, that peace, and to let the assurance that we have as Seventh-day Adventists, let it show, let it, let it bubble out into society, and let those people who are troubled, heavy laden, that need to come to Jesus, come, come unto me, Jesus says. And how do they come unto me? They come unto you and I as we interact with people throughout the week, throughout the days. Our example, the Christ who lives in us, the Holy Spirit who lives out his life within us, is Jesus on earth for those people. And we can share what it is that we have, that assurance, that joy, and that peace. The next song that we're going to sing, if I can ever get these guys back up here, they get back there and they lay down and <laughs> drink water and, you know. Two little words. Watch and pray. I've been watching the news lately. Uh, thank you. I've been watching the news lately, and there are things that I have seen that I've wondered about as I study Spirit of Prophecy. I have wondered about the, all of the attention the world has focused, for instance, on radical Islam. Have you wondered where does radical Islam fit into the last day events? I've wondered that too. I went to a seminar not long ago though where it was explained very clearly that radical Islam matches what Daniel pointed out as the king of the south. And that the papacy matched perfectly the king of the north. And that this battle would be a big battle for the last day events. And then as the world follows one of those two camps, the king of the north or the king of the south, the remnant Christians get caught in the middle of that. And that may be indeed where uh, what Ellen White refers to in various uh, aspects of great controversy, but where we see these, these forces at work. I mean, they are uh, China. Um, I've wondered about China. China is such a dominant power. Where does China come into this? Well, China has a very, very close relationship right now with the papacy outside of all other Christian denominations. I don't know if you know the, the persecution that the Christian churches are having in China. It is some of the worst that has ever been since the days of Mao Zedong. Well, uh, there are, and, and they, do, they are so vehemently opposed to radical Islam. Now, I'm not here to give a seminar, but all I'm saying is watch and pray. Watch the news. See how this unfolds. Watch and pray. Jesus said this to whom? Who did he, Jesus say this to? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He said that to his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. And by extension to us. Watch and pray. That's our first song in the next section that I'll talk about, or that we'll call the Christian walk. Watch and pray. His eye is on the sparrow. And tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. <clears throat> Christians do not seek repose 
cast your dreams of ease away. You are in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. We wicked forces, evil powers, gathered in unseen array. They wait for your unguarded hours. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Put your heavenly armor on. Armor on. And it always night and day. To defeat the evil one. Watch and pray. Jesus said to watch and pray. Hear, above all, hear your Lord. Love and serve him and obey. Treasure in your heart his word. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch as if on that.
We lost the daughter of one of our chorus members this week. Um, you're not supposed to lose your children. You're not supposed to live longer than they. But that, that happened to one of our members this week. And Sunday we'll be singing at that memorial service for them. But it points up the really powerful, happy, amazing part of being a Christian, loving Jesus, believing in the resurrection, believing the promises of God, and knowing that we will see them again. That's, it seems at times like it's just a pipe dream, but it's not a pipe dream. As surely as we are in here looking at and seeing each other, we will see those that have gone before. We will see those that, that are not with us anymore. They'll, become, they'll come a day where there will be no more pain, no more night, nothing but the glory of being with our, with our beloved family members, now risen to glory just like us, and with our Jesus throughout the ceaseless, ceaseless ages of eternity. I can't think that far, but it will be glorious. We'll finish our program tonight with three songs about heaven. First one, <clears throat> what I'm going to do when I get to have me, some, I've seen some of your cars out there, they're pretty nice, uh, some are okay, um, but when I get to heaven, I'm going ride to ride a chariot, so we'll sing about riding a chariot tonight, and then we don't know when Jesus is coming. 
But we have the assurance that we're going to be there with him when that day comes. We don't know if it'll be morning, noon, or night, and a wonderful little Wayne Hooper arrangement of, uh, you know, when is it that Jesus is coming? And finally, uh, the beautiful song that reflects on all of those um, that we that we long to see, the pain that we long to get rid of, the tragedies around the world that will be no more. We'll conclude with a with a beautiful song, "No More Night." But first, I'm gonna ride the chariot. <clears throat> I'm gonna ride on the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm gonna ride on the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. I'm gonna ride on the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm gonna ride on the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my. Lord. Are you ready, my brother? Are you ready for the journey? Do you want to see your Jesus? Yes, I'm waiting for the chariot because I'm ready to go. I'm going to ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm going to ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord. Are you ready, my sister? Oh, yeah. Are you ready for the journey? Oh, yeah. Do you want to see your Jesus? Oh, yes. I'm waiting for the chariot because I'm ready to go. I never can forget that day, right? When all my sins were taken away, right? My feet were snatched from the miry clay. Right, I'll serve my Lord till judgment day. Right, right, oh Lord, right, oh Lord, right. I'm going to ride, I'm going to ride, I'm going to ride in the chariot to see my Lord, to see my Lord. It may be at morn when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. Oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah. chance that the blackness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. Oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ 
salvation that you have set up for us and the gift of Jesus Christ that means so much to us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that works in our hearts day by day and moment by moment. And now we ask that you will bless each one in this auditorium. Bless us now as we separate, give us safety as we travel to our homes, and then how we long for that day in which we will meet again in that wonderful earth made new. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Got the side and down. Okay. 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 Cast 
your dreams of you.